The smell of smoke and death fills the air. The deafening explosions of cannon shells shake the ground, and cries of the living and dying can be heard amidst the constant cackle of machine gun fire. The trenches are filled with fearful men who know that death walks among them. The year is 1914, and war has come to Europe. The bloody horror of this war did more than change the political direction of Europe and America. It solidified the dispensational view of the future into the American mindset. At the turn of the 20th century, dispensational premillennialism was the dominant eschatology in Protestant evangelicalism. But this view had not made the jump into mainline Christian denominations like Presbyterians and Lutherans, who remained post-millennial. These old-school, liberal denominations staunchly maintained their belief in post-millennialism even though this view was crumbling under constant pressure coming from dispensationalism. The driving force behind their loyalty to post-millennialism was the Christian liberal social gospel movement that applied Christian ethics to the social problems of America. The social activism inaugurated by the Second Great Awakening spilled over into the social gospel movement of the late 19th and early 20th century. Christian groups within these mainline denominations worked to promote social justice by addressing the horrible poverty in the inner city slums and fighting for fair labor conditions. In the late 19th century, many Americans were disgusted by the poverty level and the low quality of life in these American slums. The social gospel movement provided a religious rationale for action to address those conditions. The leaders of the social gospel movement thought it unthinkable that Jesus would return to a world rift with such social evils. Therefore, post-millennialism was dominant among these activists. How could dispensationalists profess to follow Christ and not see the ills and injustices of society? This question permeated the social gospel movement. In some regards, the perception by social gospel activists that dispensational premillennialism was uncaring about social equality was accurate. Premillennial theologians generally agreed that the reforms called for by the social gospel were needed, but they did not help alleviate these social conditions. James Brooks, a Presbyterian pastor from St. Louis, Missouri, and one of the early pre-millennial theologians, believed that these social reform groups were controlled by the fell spirit of socialism. Generally, premillennial thinkers of the early 20th century viewed these Christian social activists as being misguided or under the control of the devil. Some interpreters even went so far as shunning union-made labels as the mark of the beast. James Brooks spoke the prevailing sentiments of dispensationalism when he said that Christians should keep aloof from the whole defiling scene. Premillennialists believed that only the second coming of Jesus Christ could solve the political, social, and economic injustices that vexed society. They thought it futile to think that social gospel activism could bring about the return of Jesus. These two millennial ideas 
wrestled for dominance in the liberal religious consciousness of America. During the first decade of the 20th century, the winner in this wrestling match had not been determined. But a bloody war would change everything. Cyrus Schofield and his reference Bible solidified scattered dispensational theory into a cohesive unit. His work, called the Schofield Reference Bible, was first published in 1909 and re-edited in 1917. Schofield used his annotated notes to present his version of dispensationalism. He had little hope for society since the only thing ahead for mankind was war in Armageddon. Schofield scoffed at the social gospel when he said, The true mission of the church is not the reformation of society. What Christ did not do, the apostles did not do. Not one of them was a reformer. Schofield only reflected the sentiments that permeated dispensationalism through the difficult years of the Depression and World War II. Prophecy writers emphasized the uselessness of social and political involvement. Schofield, along with other premillennialists, predicted that the Jews must return to Palestine in order for God to fulfill his final purpose for the Jewish race. Schofield also identified Russia with the Gog of Magog described in Ezekiel chapter 38, the final enemy of Israel. Schofield knew that the rapture of the church was imminent and the restoration of a Jewish homeland would signal the prophetic season when this rapture would occur. Most dispensationalists saw Schofield's work as a prophetic script for upcoming world events. Three events would occur in 1917 that would only reinforce this opinion. Schofield's script was quite clear. First, there must be massive war, then the secret rapture of the saints, and finally, the last great battle before the coming of Jesus, Armageddon. On August 7th of 1914, the guns of World War I began to fire and prophecy watchers around the world were transfixed. In their eyes, prophecy was being fulfilled right before their eyes. Premillennialism gained a whole new audience, the common Joe on the streets. Schofield's Bible presented a dispensational script of the end times, and that script seemed to reflect the current events seen in the daily newspapers. Some premillennial preachers carried the message that World War I was the opening shot of the prophetic battle of Armageddon. Next on God's prophetic timetable would be the rapture of the saints. So the rapture watches began. Schofield saw World War I as the final death struggle of the corrupt world system. The rapture had to be any day. The only problem Prophecy Watchers had with World War I in 1914 is that it was not a true world war. It was Europe's war. The United States did not enter the conflict initially because of the U.S. policy of isolationism that sought to avoid war while trying to broker peace. In January, of 1917, this would change when the United States intercepted a proposal from Berlin called the Zimmermann Telegram 
that solicited Mexico as their ally against the United States. On August 7th of 1917, Congress declared war on Germany and premillennialists got their true world war. In some regards, dispensational teachers and preachers seem to celebrate more than weep for the dead coming out of the trenches of World War I. Schofield's script had one glaring problem. How could God fulfill his prophetic plan without the Jewish people having a national homeland? To dispensationalists in 1917, this was a problem because their eschatology believed that God had two distinct people and their interpretation of the book of Revelation would not allow the two people groups to mix. Dispensationalists taught that God had a prophetic plan for Israel that was frustrated when the Jews rejected their Messiah, Jesus Christ. According to Schofield's script, God is not finished with the Jewish people. During the last days, after the rapture of the church, God would turn his attention back to the Jews and the prophetic time clock would start ticking again. The dispensationalist plan for the future hinged on the creation of a Jewish national state of Israel. But no such state existed in the early days of 1917. Premillennial excitement grew considerably on November 11th of 1917 when British Foreign Secretary Arthur James Balfour wrote a letter to Baron Rothschild, a leader in the British Jewish community that became known as the Balfour Declaration. The Balfour Declaration was a formal statement of policy by the British government that favored the creation of a national Jewish state in Palestine. The Declaration says, His Majesty's government view with favor the establishment in Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people and will use their best endeavors to facilitate the achievement of this objective it being clearly understood that nothing shall be done which may prejudice the civil and religious rights of existing non-Jewish communities in Palestine, or the rights and political status enjoyed by Jews in any other country. The Declaration became important following World War I after the collapse of the Ottoman Empire. Palestine was occupied by British military forces. The Belfort Declaration created the legal framework for Jews from all over the world to immigrate to Palestine and persecuted Jews from Russia and other anti-Semitic regions of Europe came. Some historians claim the dispensational theory proposed by John Nelson Darby influenced the British government to issue the Balfour Declaration of 1917. If this is the case, then Darby influenced world events and politics. <laughs>